All right, let's see if we can't uh, get the uh, receiver part of this working. So uh, the antenna needs to have a signal injected into it. So I'm going to use my signal generator at uh, 7.09 megahertz, which is kind of where the center of the transmit was, and that should be right where the center of the receive is. So we want to inject a signal. Well, how big of a signal do you inject? Well, uh, my experience is if you look up the specification for an S9 signal, which is a, a loud signal, a good signal, it's at minus 73 dBm. So I have my generator set to minus 13 dBm, and then I have 60 dB of attenuation. So 13 dB plus 60 dB is minus 73 dB. M dBm. So um, if you hook that up, you'll find that the signals are way too low to see what you're doing on your spectrum analyzer. At least it was for me. So I'm going to do a S9 plus 30. <laughs> so I'm going to remove one of the 30, d, 30, these are both 30 dB attenuators. So now I'm going to have uh, minus 55. So I'm going to have minus 55 dBm coming into the receiver, and that'll give us a nice healthy signal to be able to look on our spectrum analyzer. All right, so let me put that over there. Now, how are we going to probe the circuit, okay? Well, uh, people do it different ways. People have RF probes and other kind of fancy probes. I'm just going to use uh, a scope probe because it's on my bench already. I just had to disconnect it from my raggle and it's all ready to go. Now make sure you put it in the times one, not the times ten. So put it in times one and then uh, we can probe around. Now we don't want to probe around this way uh, because there's DC voltages and DC will go through the scope probe. So you have to make sure you have a uh, a DC block on your spectrum analyzer. Um, the tiny SA, if that's the spectrum analyzer you have, it already has a DC block in it, uh, but I'm told you don't want to go above 15 volts. So uh, you probably want to uh, have an external DC load, a DC, uh, DC block. Um, I have several um, and I've connected one to the uh, spectrum analyzer that's good to 200 volts and it'll be just fine. So I have the scope going through the DC block, which is just a capacitor. The so scope going through a capacitor to the, um, to the spectrum analyzer. Now you can build your own DC block. I did. Uh, one of my little Lego blocks has just got a 0.1 microfarad capacitor in it. So you can build your own DC block. Okay. So we have scope probe, DC block, spectrum analyzer. Now we can go poke around. So uh, the signal comes in here and it's going to follow uh, this path up here. Okay, so can I zoom in on that a little bit? Um, so it's gonna go through a transformer and then it's gonna go through the first mixer. So let's go ahead and probe around on the first mixer. Pin six should have our LO and pin five should have our output. Okay, so this is the only two things we really need to monitor. We don't need to monitor the input because it'll come on the output. Uh, so let's take a look at pin six first, okay? Pin six should be our three, um, three megahertz LO. So it is right down here. So I'm gonna probe pin six. And let me, uh, let me set up the, uh, Let me set up the spectrum analyzer. Let me turn on NTSC so it doesn't flicker. Okay, I'll do a frequency of three megahertz. We'll do a span of two megahertz, that'll be fine. And now if we look at pin six, I'm probing pin six. Five, six, six is here. Uh, there, oh. uh, there is our signal. Oh, it's hard to do this with, let me do this left-handed. Okay, so let me increase the amplitude. So there we go, there's our LO. And let me turn the LO, so you can see it goes back and forth. God, it's hard to do with, there we go. So I'm, I am moving the uh, tune knob and the LO is moving back and forth. So our three megahertz is moving 
fine. Let's do a peak search on it. It's at 3.095. Okay, so that makes sense. 3.095 be at 7.095 uh, uh, receive. All right, so we know our LO is working. All right, so that was uh, that was pin six. So let's look at pin five. Pin five should be the input minus the LO. So this should be four megahertz. Pin five should be at four megahertz, okay? So let's change the spectrum analyzer frequency center to four megahertz. Actually, let's make it, uh, yeah, four megahertz. Um, and let me look at pin five. Pin five is the, uh, is the output, and there we go. It's a bit low because our input's a bit low, right? Okay, so what can we do to make that higher? We want to peak it. When you're working on receivers, you want to peak things. So what are the adjustments we can do to peak it? Uh, well, the first is there is an RF adjust, which is just a potentiometer. So we have to make sure we've turned this to get maximum RF. So we will do that. And then the next one is this transformer. We need to move the core in and out of this little transformer and peak this so uh, we get the maximum signal on pin 5. Okay, So we're going to go to pin 5. And we're going to tweak this first, and we're going to tweak this second. Okay, so let's go do that. Okay, so we want to go to pin five. Here's pin five, and now I'm adjusting the RF gain. Oh, there it goes up and down. Oh, good. So it was down. So RF gain up. So now we get a nice healthy four four megahertz adjust. Now I'm going to adjust that um, that transformer. I'm going to move the slug in and out of that transformer. And oh, there it goes moving. So I've already peaked it before. I'm going to peak it up. So there we go. We've peaked it. So that's one of the nice things about a nice fast spectrum analyzer. You can do all this stuff real time. You don't have to wait for the wait for the sweep. So put it on a sweep that's nice and fast. Okay. All right. So we've, we've done two things. Uh, we've adjusted the RF gain and we've adjusted the uh, uh, input filter. There's a 7 megahertz filter on the input, uh, a band select filter kind of thing. And now we get a nice biggest, the biggest signal we can get on pin 5. That's what, that's what we were, uh, that's what we're shooting for. Now we're at 4, now we're at 4 megahertz and it should go through this crystal filter and then it should go into this mixer. And so this mixer takes it from 4 megahertz down to audio. So let's make sure this thing is operating correctly. Let's look at pins six and seven. They should be at four megahertz because of, oh, I'm sorry, I'm off camera here. Um, so we're looking at this mixer. We've got four megahertz coming in and we want to have uh, four megahertz uh, on this pin six or seven. Oh, my phone's ringing. Unknown, I don't answer the phone if it's unknown. All right. So let's see if six and seven have four megahertz on them. So I'm going to be on to the next mixer. It's already gone through the uh, crystal filter here. Now I'm going to go here, six and seven, six or seven, I guess. Uh, let's see here. There we go. I can pick probe seven. And we have four megahertz right on the smack on the middle. That's good. So four megahertz. Let's, uh, Let's do, let's do a peak search on that. Okay, four megahertz, good. And now we can monitor the output and it should mix it down to audio land, right? And so let me see how I can hook that up so you guys can hear it. Oh, I know, I can run it through my amplifier. So let me, uh, let me hook up the output and see if we can't get, a, uh, can't get an audio tone. All right, I put some clip leads here on the audio output and it's going into uh, my amplifier. So we should be able to hear it. Um, and let's adjust the uh, tuning. Oh, I think you can hear that. So for off, it's nothing. Up the other side of it's nothing. So if we tune right in on it, So what we're doing is we're taking the, uh, let me turn this off. We're taking the uh, carrier, mixing it down to four megahertz, 
and then we're mixing it down to audio. And what we're doing is we're mixing four megahertz with the incoming signal. And if they're off by 700 hertz or 500 hertz, that's what you hear on the output. So we're down converting it one more time from four megahertz down to 100 hertz or 500 hertz, something like that, right? So let me uh, turn that back on. So we get a low tone, we're getting closer. We get a high tone, we're getting farther away. So we can zero beat it. You hear about zero beating it, you can go down to, you go down to the same frequency, you'll get zero, zero hertz. So most radios automatically tune when they, when you set it to CW, it automatically adds, say, 800 hertz. It automatically does that, shifts the IF for you. Um, and that's what we've done here. So anyway, we've proved that uh, everything's working great. So let's go ahead and do a minus, uh, a uh, S, S9 signal. So right now we're way too hot, right? We're plus, plus 30 dBm, um, or S9 plus 30. Let's find my other, my other, <laughs> where did it go? My other 30 dB uh, attenuator, which, oh, here it is. I always have a messy uh, bench, so I can never find things, so. So I'm gonna add a total of 60 dB of attenuation and the generator is set to minus 13. So we have minus 73 dBm coming in and that is an S9 signal. And let's turn this on. Oh, it sounds very nice. So that's S9. So I think uh, I think it's working really well. I think we were over modulating a bit because we had too hot of a signal. So this sounds much nicer, right? Yeah, works great. Okay, uh, one more thing on the schematic before we leave. Uh, we kind of left off here. We were uh, down converting here. Well, the down converting just goes into a op amp, and the op amp is a um, auto gain, I think. Uh, it's got some clipping resistors and stuff here, so uh, I think it's I think it's pretty uh, pretty well gained. I think we were hearing this clipping; it was getting too loud. Um, and then it goes into a final audio amplifier and goes out. Uh, so we're hooking our uh, speaker uh, here on the output. So this the, it's a dual op amp, so they're just using it as a two phase thing. Now, right in between is this clever circuit. It's a it's a FET used as a switch. So when you um, are receiving, then this switch is on and things go through. When you're transmitting, it automatically uh, turns this transistor off, which mutes the circuit. Okay, so there's a, there's a mute switch in here, so you don't uh, blast yourself. Uh, you don't want to uh, have really, really loud when you're transmitting. You want a little bit through so that you can hear yourself send code, um, but you don't want uh, you don't want a whole bunch of it. So there's a 4.7 meg resistor. So when, you, when you're receiving, it's zero ohms, and when you're transmitting, it's 4.7 meg ohms. So it bleeds a little bit, bleeds a little bit through. That's the receive section.